Amen. Uh, I'm going to be speaking out of the last, well, not the last chapter, but the last chapter that Jesus is speaking to the assembly of the church. It's the third chapter of Revelation. Let's stand for reading of God's Word. The last two churches that Jesus is speaking to uh, that are assembling in these last days is the church of Philadelphia, which Jesus Christ said, I've given you an open door. Nobody can shut it. I open that door. No one can open it. I shut it. No one can close it. I'm giving you opportunity. He said, you have a little strength, he said to, to Philadelphia. And he said, strengthen what is remaining and do what God has called you to do. Amen. I mean, you know, it's important that we do what God has called us to do. And I'm going to be talking to you about the last church that Jesus spoke to that was assembling together in the last time before the beginning of the great tribulation period. Verse 14, it's called the church of Laodicea. And the angel of the church of Laodicea, unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen. Did you know uh, Amen is a name for Jesus? And so you need to put them Amens where they belong because they're a name for Jesus. Amen. And he says, He's the faithful, he, he saith the Amen, the faithful true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus is the creator. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath ear, an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I draw your attention to verse 20. Behold, Jesus said, I stand at the door. I knock, and I do more than knock. I say, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup have supper with him and he with me. I want to use for a subject, there's one at the door with a package. You may be seated. There's one at the door with a package. I've been searching my heart and been praying and seeking my spirit because surely surely god doesn't want the church to hide in the corner with a mask on and hope this thing blows over surely we're not to be just survivors we are to be revivers surely god didn't call us to just hang on until we get to the other side Surely God has a big work for us to do. I believe that. I believe with all my heart that God has something spectacular that He wants done by His church in these last days. And oh, I'm praying so hard that the Lord will guide us, direct us, and that we will fulfill our destiny as a church of Jesus Christ and be more than just someone trying to survive the pandemics or survive the storms and the trials, but that we will be overcomers. And that the door that's set before us, we will strengthen ourselves and we will take opportunity that God has given us to be the church that is on fire for Jesus Christ. 
I love seeing these young people sing. I love seeing these young people come to church. It does my heart so much good to hear Van sing. It blesses my heart to hear him sing. It blesses my heart to see not only him sing, but young people come together. No matter their ages, they're, 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 God's doing something in their life. I remember when the little girls first started coming to the church, Judy went down the street and she gathered up a bunch of little girls. They were just tiny little things when she gathered them up. They want to bring you to church. And those little girls gathered around in the room and, Jesus, and Judy said to them, what do you know about Jesus? What do you know about the gospel? And one little girl said to Judy, all I know is that there's somebody up there and somebody died. Well, they learned about that somebody up there, mighty God, sovereign God of the universe, and they learned about the one who died, rose again from the grave. Thank God for that. Jesus Christ said the church of Laodicea was a lukewarm church. Now, you know what lukewarm is? It's the temperature of flesh. 98.6, that's what lukewarm is. It's a temperature of flesh. Lukewarm. And Jesus Christ said, because you're lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I've been told by coffee drinkers that coffee's better hot or cold. It's not too good, lukewarm. I don't think it's too good either way, but anyway, that's what they tell me. And so, we see in these last days that Jesus Christ very clearly said that there would be a church like Philadelphia and there would be opportunity for that church because Jesus Christ has left the door open for them to evangelize and share the gospel. And no one can stop us from preaching. No one can stop us from praying. They throw us in jail, there'll be people in jail to preach to. If they put us in a bucket and put a lid over the top of it, we can still talk to God. Because prayer works no matter where you're at, no matter what position you're in, prayer works. So that door cannot be shut. God has given us an opportunity. And I thank God for that opportunity. I thank God for the fact that when Jesus stood at the door of Laodicea, He had a package. How many know Jesus has a package? Jesus has a package called everlasting life. Jesus has a package called peace and hope and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus has a package that we can open up and we can enjoy and refresh ourselves in a God of great miracles. We have a God that can do anything. Are you listening to me? And... If, you, if you're comfortable with just sitting in church and doing nothing, you're not going to like this sermon. If you're comfortable with just, praise God, I'm going to survive. I'm going to wait till this thing blows over. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ came to die on the cross of Calvary so that we could reach out to others and bring them in so that they can be saved as well. Jesus said to the church of Laodicea, I stand at the door and knock. Not only was he knocking, he was talking. And he was saying to the church of Laodicea, I don't know exactly what all he was saying. I know the scripture says, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I assume Jesus was saying, Open the door! Let me in! You need more than money. You need more than riches. You need more than fame. You need more than glory, man's glory. You need God. Let me in. You need more than religious gatherings. You need the moving of the Spirit of God. And so Jesus Christ is saying, let me in. I can give you eternal life. Not only will I give you eternal life, I will have supper with you. Where do you get that word supper right there? Sup, that means supper. Have supper. Amen. Some of you call it breakfast and, and lunch or brunch, and then you call the end time dinner. Well, you're just all mixed up, folks. 
you're really scrambled up in your head. You have eat too many scrambled eggs. It's turned to scrambled eggs in your head. It's not, it's not breakfast and, 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 and lunch and then dinner. No, it's breakfast. And it's dinner. And it's supper. Every fat boy knows that. Every country boy knows that. Amen? It's breakfast, dinner, and supper. It's not, it's not breakfast and lunch or brunch. I don't even know what brunch is. Sounds like a bunch of highfalutes got together and decided they wanted to call it brunch. If you call it brunch, you're just too highfalutin for me. You know what the upper crust is, don't you? That's where a few little crumbs get together on top. That's the upper crust. You know what a big shot is, don't you? Someone that's away from home. Hello. But it's very clear that God wants something done. And God has given us a package. And that package is the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many would agree that the gospel of Jesus Christ still works? Amen. Amen. It still works. And uh, Jesus Christ still saves. It makes no difference what the political temperature is in the land. It makes no difference what the, what the pandemic in the land is. It makes no difference what happening around us. Let's don't be swamped with fear. Let's rise up in the gospel of Jesus Christ and let's tell people that if they ever needed the Lord before, they sure do need Him now. Amen? If this world ever needed the Lord before, they sure do need Him now. And they needed Him before, they need Him now, and they'll need Him in the future. And Jesus Christ says, you open the door and let me in and I'll begin to do things that will just absolutely change your life. I want the door wide open to Jesus Christ. How about you? You want that door wide open to Jesus Christ? I do. Now, first of all, I want to say that Jesus Christ, God gives us everything freely through the person of Jesus Christ. What God gives us, He gives to us freely through the person of Jesus Christ. When we open that door and say, Jesus, I need you. When Jesus is in your life, when you let Jesus in, everything changes. Anything's possible when Jesus Christ steps inside of your life. Anything incredible can happen because Jesus Christ said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. How much power? All power. Well, if Jesus Christ has all power, where did the devil get his? Same place he's always got what he's got. Stole it. Well, he didn't steal it from Jesus. He must have stole it from man. He stole it from Adam. He stole it from Eve. He didn't steal it from God. He came down to earth and he stole it from Adam. He stole it from Eve. And he's been stealing ever since. You say, you got Bible for that? Yeah, John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ said, I've come that you might have life. And so the devil, if he has any power, it's what we've yielded to him either through ignorance or a lack of understanding or we have yielded our flesh, which is temperature, lukewarm temperature. And we've not got on fire for the Lord. You say, what does that mean by Jesus Christ said to Laodicea, I wish you were, I would that you were cold or hot, because you're, if you're lukewarm, I'll have to spew you out of my mouth. Um, it simply meant that he said, I would that you were cold, meaning you didn't even know God. If you were cold and, and didn't, didn't serve God and didn't know God at all, or didn't, at least you, you know, you didn't have a knowledge of God. If you were that way, I could do something with you. But because you think you've got it together, it's hard to, it's hard to teach a, uh, 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 an old dog new tricks. It's hard, to, it's hard to teach somebody something new. We get set in our ways. Amen? Most people has got to be de-doctrinized just to be given good doctrine. Hello? Have you ever went through the de-doctrinize? That's the, that's the Christian um, detox program. De-doctrinized. And so Jesus Christ said, 
I would that you were cold, because if you were cold, then I could do something with you. i just hit you on the head with a good old Holy Ghost conviction and bring you to your senses, and you'd come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on me, and you'll be born again. Jesus Christ said, if you were cold like that, I could do something with you. But because you think that you've got it together, you don't even think you're lost. You think you're okay. See, I'd prefer that you be hot, on fire for God. I prefer that you be strong and on fire for God. But you're right in the middle, and right in the middle is where that line is on the highway that you get ran over at. You just get right in the middle. Amen. I declare, some of you are worse than an armadillo. I got so tickled. Has anybody ever seen a live armadillo on the highway? Hello? It's kind of like spotting someone that has COVID-19. But anyway, I'll move on. And, and I mean, never, will, never will forget the time I drove up to the airport and I'm driving by, and I said, what is that on the medium? They have a concrete medium there by the intersection. And I said, what is that? And I drove real slow, and I looked, and it was an armadillo and turned upside down. And in between its paws was a can of Budweiser. And I thought, that is a sermon right there. <laughs> Amen? I mean, he got it. I don't think the armadillo was drunk, but... Uh, that's what happens to people who get drunk and get on the road. Like the little boy that, or the man that was lost in the woods, not a little boy, a grown-up, lost in the woods, and he had four or five people come by and say, do you need help? He said, no, I'm not lost. I'm okay. Well, he was just as lost as he could. And he didn't stop to get directions. He's lost in the woods. And he remained lost. Because he wasn't willing to admit that he was lost. And that's the way the church of Laodicea was. They did not admit. They said they were rich. They had need of nothing. And Jesus Christ said, because you're lukewarm. And Jesus Christ said himself to a bunch of religious people. He said, take heed that your light be not darkness. Because if your light be darkness, great is that darkness. And Jesus Christ was saying, religion will damn you to hell if you've got the wrong doctrine." Religion will destroy you and damn you if you've got the wrong beliefs. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. In any other way, you can't be saved unless you believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that belief will be so strong that it will move your life into holiness and righteousness and trust in the Lord. Amen? And so... When Jesus comes in, through him comes all the mercy, the grace, the love, the forgiveness. I'm glad that that package was full of forgiveness for me. How I many of you, when you let Jesus in the door, there was a package full of forgiveness. And boy, I needed a big package. How I many needed a big package? In fact, forgiveness, the package that I needed of forgiveness was huge. And I keep a few extra packs around. Forgiveness. How many, how many keep a few extra packages of forgiveness around? Amen? Uh, I don't think there'll ever be a shortage of forgiveness as long as Jesus is in our life. And I thank God for that forgiveness and mercy that Jesus Christ gives us. But the Bible says that God has chosen to bless us through His Son. And everything that we receive, we receive by His Son. As a free gift from God, Jesus was a free gift to us. Jesus' mercy and forgiveness is free to us. It cost God the Father His precious, wonderful, lovely Son. But it cost heaven everything. But you and I, on this miserable planet, we receive God's riches because of His rich grace. His manifold graces of God. And thank God that I've been forgiven. Thank God that I'm saved. And I'm going to heaven because of that. I never will forget uh, the story I heard about a man who died. And he, and he, and he told his, he, he, his family had gone on. And he was pretty much alone. And, and they asked him what he wanted to put on his tombstone. He said, I just want one word put on my tombstone. And when he died, they put one word on his tombstone. Forgiven. 
forgiven. That's really all that matters, that we're forgiven, right? Hello? I'm glad I'm forgiven. Nothing can change that. That can't be reversed. Once I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. Look at verse 31 and 32 of Romans chapter 8. What shall we say to these things? We've opened the door, let Jesus in. We've asked him to take over our life. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his son, his own son, he that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with his son also freely give us all things? Amen? Isn't that beautiful? God gives us all things. And I believe the end time challenge shouldn't be survival, but a reviving of our land. Our end time challenge shouldn't be hunkering up in a house somewhere, fear of sickness and disease and fear of what's coming upon this world. Our end time challenge ought to be standing tall, saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Survival is not the answer, but reviving our land, reviving our prayer life, reviving our families, reviving our church, being revived. God's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. We don't have a stay-at-home God. God didn't have a stay-at-home order. God didn't have a stay-at-heaven order, stay-on-the-throne order. That throne's His forever. And the earth is His footstool. But there's nobody going to boss God around. Hello. And as long as there's a God in heaven, there's nobody going to boss His child around. And I just happen to be one. Now, if God wants to boss me, boss away. But who is he that condemns you? It is Christ that died. It's Christ that justified us. No one can look at me and find fault with me. Christ Jesus is taking care of that fault. The problem is not in a fault of my life or the past. The problem is the man who finds fault or the woman who finds fault with someone else. The problem is not the one that fell and crumbled and got forgiveness. The problem is the one that looks down there, snoot like this, and say, what did it look at Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. They did this. They done that. Hello. I'm glad Jesus don't do us that way. Amen. And the Bible says that with Jesus Christ, God freely gives us all things. The scripture is very clear that if God be for us, who can be against us? One preacher was preaching one night and he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And somebody stood up and said, the deacons, that's who. There's another preacher. Listen to me. I answer to God. And I must always answer to God. And if God requires me to answer to anyone in my life, then I answer to them. But we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? No one can win against us. We're children of God. And everything that God gives us, the Bible says, shall he not with his son freely give us all things. Well, if he forgave us when we asked Jesus to come in our heart. How many, how many of the Lord forgave you when you asked Jesus to come in your heart? Raise your hand. Did the Lord forgive you? Well, if he forgave you and gave you eternal life, he, fre- he freely gave you eternal life. With Jesus Christ, God freely gave you eternal life. Now that you're a child of God, shall he not with his son Continue to freely give us all things. People are so messed up in the head. They're so confused in their mind. They seem to think that God forgives the sinner. Oh, yes, praise God. They go to the altar. God forgives them. And then after they get forgiven from the Lord, a sinner that's lived in wicked sin and, 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 and separated from God, God forgives them then for some reason they think the same God that forgives that sinner 
of their wicked sin and gives them eternal life has changed somehow and now he's stricter on them than he was the sinner. I want to say right now that if God forgives a wicked, vile sinner separated from him and was fighting against God, don't you think God will forgive you as a child of his? If you're God's child, don't you think? You say, i got to talk God into forgiving me. No, you got to talk some sense into your heads what you've got to do. You don't have to talk God into forgiving you. God, God, God sent His Son to the cross of Calvary. Now, we can repent of our sin and ask God to forgive us for our transgression. But let me just simply say this clearly. I ain't ever, I am never, it's not good English, but I'm never, ever, ever, never, ever going to bow down and kiss the foot of another man. Not going to happen. If I ever bow down and kiss the foot of another man, his name will be Jesus Christ and his feet will have nail prints in his feet. Amen. You might as well blow me full of holes before I do something like that. I'm just not going to do it. Amen. Hello. And if they ever try to force me to bow down and kiss the foot of someone, I'll bite their big toe off. Spit it out in their face. Hello. Say, preacher, I can't believe you said that. Done said it's done. Forgive me. Sure glad for forgiveness. I love Wednesday night. Don't you love Wednesday night? Now, let me just say this. Not only does God give us all things, and by Him, by Jesus, freely gives us all things, but all things are possible. Everything is possible. Miracles are possible. Did you hear what I said? Miracles are possible. How many would agree that, it's, that as long as Jesus Christ, and he, he liveth forever, and He's our great high priest, then, then it's not just... It's never impossible. It's him possible. Him possible. Amen. And just because Jesus went away and sat down at the Father's right hand doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't have as much power as he had when he walked the shores of Galilee. Doesn't mean he didn't have as much power as when he said to the lame, leap for joy, or spoke to Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Uh, uh, just because Jesus went back to the Father and sat down on the right hand of his Father doesn't tell us that he has, he has lessened in his power. If anything, he has increased in his power. Amen. Come on now. I believe, in it. I believe that God is the God of, uh, of possibility. I believe God can do anything. I believe all things are possible with God Almighty. How many of you believe that? Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23 and, and 24. Jesus is at the foot of Mount Transfiguration. He's come down from the mount, and there he comes to the mount, and he finds a man that is just beside himself because the disciples couldn't cast the demon out of his son. And Jesus said unto this man, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out, saying, With tears, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Now let me say real quickly, every miracle begins with tears and every miracle ends with tears. Let me say that again. Every miracle begins with tears and every miracle ends with tears. It begins with the tears of intercession. It begins with the tear of bitterness. It begins with the tear of crying out to God. It begins with the tear of pleading and asking God for a miracle. It ends with the tears of joy. And that man at the foot of transfiguration said, Lord, I believe. But, and with tears he said, I believe. But help thou mine unbelief. And Jesus set that man free. That boy, that child from demons. The de disciples couldn't do it. But how many know when the disciples can't do it, Jesus still can do it? When the church can't do it, Jesus can still do it. No matter who it is. And I think Peter was a pretty incredible guy. 
How many would agree that Apostle Peter was pretty incredible? Apostle Paul was pretty incredible. Amen? I mean, Apostle Paul's preaching, and he's preaching way into the night, and a guy named Eutychus falls out the window and dies. He falls asleep while Paul's preaching. I'd have been too scared to fall asleep while Paul's preaching. But he fell asleep and fell out the window in a higher uh, a balcony area while Paul was preaching. And he fell out the window and killed, dead. I mean, probably broke his neck, the graveyard dead. And Paul went down to the bottom of that building, went out into the yard where that man had fallen. He grabbed a hold of him. He said, you don't go to sleep on me. Wake up. No, that ain't what he did. But that's probably what he felt like doing. And he says to that guy, wake up. Rise. And he did. I mean, would agree Paul was an incredible apostle. Got some good news. When they fail, Jesus cannot fail. I said, when they fail, Jesus cannot fail. Amen? I've said this before. I'm a better preacher than Apostle Paul. And the reason I know that I'm a better preacher than Apostle Paul is it took Paul all night to put that man to sleep. I can put you to sleep in three minutes. But all things are possible to him that believe it. I may believe that if you believe in miracles, God can deliver. You just got to learn to believe. Amen. Hello. Believe in the God of miracles. Every miracle begins with tears and every, well, actually tears of pain and hunger for that and ends in the joy, tears of joy. Miracles have tears. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together to them that love God. Are you to them that love God? Are you in that category to them that love God? To them that love God? All things work together to them that love God. Well, I'm part of to them. To them that, who are called according to His purpose. To them who are the called according to His purpose. I mean, know that every person in this room, God has a purpose for. I said everybody in this room, God has a purpose for. We all have an end time challenge. It's not to just have church. It's not just to sing. It's not just to preach. It's to impart the life of Jesus Christ to those we work with, those we know, to our family. We are to reach out and share Jesus with those we know. You say, well, I don't know anybody. Nobody comes around. Well, they, you've got electricity in your house, don't you? Write a good old gospel letter to the person that you're mailing the check to. You say, well, I don't do that. I pay by, you know, electronic online stuff. Well, just find a way to short circuit and say something. I mean, just dial zero and say, I want to talk to a real person. Amen? <laughs> and then you'll get someone in India or... And you don't understand what they're saying, and they don't understand you either. Amen? Come on. You got something wrong? You got something against Indian people? No. I just can't understand them. Amen? And they can't understand me very good because I talk like a Missouri guy. Hello? And the worst people of all are Arkansasers. I mean, you can't understand a word they say. And if you're from Arkansas, don't meet me after the service. I don't want to hear about it. But there are miracles. And I want to say something real quickly because it's important that you catch this. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Now that brings me to the last phrase that I want to give you. And this is something very important. And I've been thinking about changing this, changing our... Our slogan of our church. Now we have our logo and it's touching the world through Jesus Christ. Our logo with the world, we're touching the Ozarks, we're touching the world through Jesus Christ. When we come to church, we sit out and we'll put on the screen where you're a visitor. Uh, only for 
the first time. After that, you're not a visitor. And that, but I've been thinking about changing the theme of our church. Now, at first you may say, well, preacher, I don't know about this. Well, I think it's very scriptural. The theme of our church ought to be something like this. Where God makes it possible and we make it happen. That's good. Where God makes it possible and we make it happen. God made it possible for me to enjoy a revival in my life. It's up to me to make it happen. God made it possible for this house to be full of people hungry for the Lord. It's up to us to make it happen. Now, I realize we must have the strength of God. And, I, and, and you know, I'm not a dodo bird. I, I'm, I'm not totally lost my mind. We can't even walk across the street without God. And a, a glass of water would drown this graveyard dead without God's grace. I mean, I understand that. And I understand that we can't do anything without Christ. I mean, Christ said, uh, without me, you can do nothing. But I still believe the truth is set there. That God makes it possible. And we make it happen. Now, we make it happen because we let the Spirit of God use us. We make it happen because we let the Spirit of God lead. How many like that? You like that motto of the church? Where, where God makes it possible. And we make it happen. We can make sure these rooms are full of people. We just got to get out there and make it happen. We can, we can do what God's called us to do. We just got to make it happen. God supplied us. He made it possible. How I many know oh, God made it possible? We got an awesome gospel message. He made it possible for people to be forgiven. He made it possible for people to be transformed. He made it possible for a great move of God. He made it possible for the strength of God to flood through this place. He made it possible. He gave us His Son. He gave us the Gospel. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Word of God. He gives us the charge. Go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. He gives us the energy and the strength and the commission. Now, we need to make it happen. And we won't make it happen sitting in the corner of our home with a mask on hoping for an invisible enemy to blow through. I refuse to hunker down in my house for fear of something I cannot see. Second Timothy says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I refuse to let the politics of this land and the, and the, the politicians, that don't, some of them don't even know God. They, they hate the church. They hate God. I don't know about that guy in California, but whoever he is, somebody needs to take him outside the church and work him over in Jesus' name. I don't know who he is. But when he starts telling the church don't sing, it's none of his stinking business. When he starts telling the church, don't assemble and don't meet together, it's still none of his business. Amen? And if the health department were to come to our church and say, shut her down, it's none of their business. But we got enough sense to know that if there's something happening in our church, we'll do it of our own accord. We don't need someone beating us with a rubber mallet on top of the head telling us what to do or not do. We got enough sense. We've got enough intelligence and enough spirituality about us. We can hear from God. And I don't need to be babied. I need to be Holy Ghost. Moved upon and led and guided. Amen. Hello. Now, you say, preacher, you just sound like you're just, you just can't get along with people. Well, you know, most people, it's got an ego about them. If you don't do what they tell you to do, they think you don't, they think you're the rebel and they're the good person. Amen. 
If I had to wear a mask, I'll get one of them bandanas and just put it over my nose, walk into the bank and say, I'm here. Where's the stagecoach? Now, we got enough sense to know if we're hacking and slobbering and coughing and sneezing to stay home. Bless your heart, if you walk into this room snotting like a Brahma bull, coughing and sneezing and a fever, we're going to grab you up and we're going to toss you in your car and we're going to say, go home. Hello. Amen. Hello. You say, why are you doing this? You're preaching to the choir. I know that. But there's that little camera right there that I'm preaching live streaming. And they just need to know that there's a preacher somewhere that's got enough backbone not to listen to a bunch of nonsense. Hello. And by the way, someone said the other day on the live stream, they said, well, I have church on the internet. I have church on live streaming. Somebody's got to switch somewhere. I don't know where their switch is. But somebody has a switch somewhere on the internet, over the web, that they can put us out of business at the click of a finger. Amen? So if the power goes out right now while I'm speaking, you know what happened. Are we, you know, we're kidding ourselves if we think, well, we can evangelize the world through Internet. We're kidding ourselves if we think, well, we can speak. Everybody can get on the soapbox now. Everybody can get on their own soapbox. Their own thing. How long do you think they're going to let us do that? They can censor what we say. In fact, when I preach a sermon, Josh, we found out this early on. I preach a sermon, we put it on YouTube. And they'll catch segments of the YouTube, and they'll ask me, do you want to take it off, or do you want us to take it off? Now, I know there's not people sitting down listening to me preach the whole sermon. So the algorithm, or whatever it is, is listening for certain words. And when it catches that, it deletes it or tells you. Amen. By the way, we think we got 5,000 followers. And it probably has you down to about 20 or 25. You had not heard from friends for a while? Because they've been taken off your little group. Hello? You say, well, preacher, you just sound like you don't trust the Internet. Right. Right. When it first came out, it was called the web. Well, it don't take a rocket scientist, Brother Dave, to know that a web is not a good thing. A web is where a spider gets, and when you get stuck in the web, the spider eats you. Amen. And some folks can't get by without that phone. I mean, come on, you got to have that phone going. What are you going to do if one day you wake up and find out, whoa, somebody has turned me off? Does your life stop? Not mine. As long as I got a neighbor across the street. Mine's not going to stop. I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. You say, well, preacher, where's your stand on? If there's sickness in the church, my, I told you my stand. We got enough sense to know if we need to do something. We don't need some guy that knows nothing about Jesus Christ telling us what we can do or can't do. Amen? And, and you know, this is a wicked world. The church is not exempt from troublemakers. Hello? Hello? Our van, God knows it had enough problems without it having its guts cut, it, cut out of it. Our church van sits right out there under lights. It belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And someone got under the van and cut the catalytic converter out. 
shot it out and pulled it out from under our van. Hello? And if you did that, I know you're not watching this on live streaming, but if you did that, if you some, by some accident the Lord has slammed you down and made you listen to me, and if you're guilty of that, you bring that catalytic converter back, or I'm going to stand and watch the Lord skin your hide on Judgment Day. Amen? You say, well, what if they get right with God? Bring the catalytic converter back. Like the guy that borrowed $300 from me. And he said, I got saved. That was 30 years ago. 35, no, it's 45 years ago. Borrowed $300 from me. And my, my word to him, he said, he got saved, loves the Lord. What's your word? I hope you're listening. Bring my $300 back. You know, that's not forgiveness. No, but it's being futile with my money. Being smart, amen? Hello? Jerry, will you loan me $300 after the sun? You probably would. No, I wouldn't borrow money from you. I want to keep my friends. Amen? I don't need no money anyway. Judy's got all mine. If I had some money, I'd give it to her. She'd get it. Feel sorry for me. She'd get it. I got a good wife. She's, she's, she's precious. I told somebody the other day at the convenience store, I said, they said, well, how do you, you know, you seem to be so happy and everything. I'm happy because I got a wife named Judy. And they said, well, I'm glad you're married and you've got a wife named Judy. I said, no, you don't understand. Judy does plumbing, Judy does roofing, Judy does concrete work, Judy does carpeting, Judy does carpenter work, Judy works on the car when it breaks down, Judy takes care of the bills, Judy takes care of everything in the house, Judy washes the dishes, Judy makes the meals, Judy keeps the house clean, Judy takes care of all the bills, Judy takes care of everything, and some guy in the convenience store over behind the counter, he said, Judy, 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 Judy. And the woman, the woman spoke up and said, where can I get a Judy, 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 Judy? And I said, I don't know where you can get a Judy, but you're not getting mine. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Sam, we're going to give an invite. You say, preacher, you preached a little longer than I really wanted you to preach tonight. Well, there's some folks back there in the back, and they informed me that they didn't have enough time last time. And I thought I'd just listen to the guys in the back instead of the guys in the front. They'd stay here all night if they got a chance. I guarantee you they would. They love getting together. I'm glad you came. Let's do something for the Lord. Listen, God makes it possible. We need to try to make it happen. God makes it possible. Now let's make it happen. Right? Let's make it happen. God give us everything we need. Now let's make it happen. Let's make it happen in our life. Let's don't just go through this and try to get through this and survive through this. Let's, let's revive through this. Let's make it happen. Let's make a difference in this end time. Altars open. You want to come and talk to the Lord.